Greetings everybody, how you doing? It's your boy Brian Polito, proud publisher of the one and only Coffin Comics. And I am here to discuss the Coffin Comics 2022 publishing schedule. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. But before we do that, what the heck goes into this? Well, here we're sitting on, you know, the last week of September and we know every year we want to be ready for it. So when we reveal to you this publishing schedule, I'm here to let you know that a lot of these projects are already in production. We've already figured the story out and we're going for it. So without further ado, let me present to you your Coffin Comics 2022 publishing schedule. Strap in. I guess one of the fun things too is revealing the names of these stories. So first up, you have Lady Death Chapter 15, Necrotic Genesis. Necrotic Genesis. Now what the heck is a name like Necrotic Genesis? To me, what it means, necrotic is necro, means death, and Genesis means life, so it's necro, death, death, life. What are we talking about? Well, we're gonna be picking up some story threads that I began, that Mike and I began in chapter 10, chapter nine of Nightmare Symphony. So way at the back here, Nightmare Symphony takes place right before Lady Death's cursed sleep. And we do this scene way at the back here. Get over there. So check the scene out in Phoenix. What happens is this little nanite robot is oh like i'm getting ahead of myself give me a second here i'm going to show you so as lady death is settling into this domestic lifestyle unbeknownst to her she is actually a piece of her hair is grabbed by this insect like thing which is actually a nanite robot and later the hair is then brought to a place called the Halo Corporation. And this quasi super science, quasi religious organization. And they begin working on her DNA. Now, 20 years later, Lady Death reawakens. And if you're reading the current storyline, you'll see that there's characters showing up that have similar looks to her, the pale skin. Uh, abilities, supernatural abilities, and the characters we've introduced so far that have that ability would be Hana, and then we have characters from a group called the Sisterhood, including uh, Isadora, Bella Rima, and others. And so what are they about? Now we're going to really dive head in and we're going to explore this in Necrotic Genesis, where this premise, this topic, really comes to the forefront. and. This ties into a major Lady Death event for the year we're calling World War Death. So the reason we're calling it World War Death is given that Lady Death has returned and is actually viewed by the general global population as an enemy. And certainly she's done a lot of behaviors that would prove that. I mean, sure, she saved the globe in, sec in what I better not say. But by the same token, we've seen her in stories like Malevolent Decimation and Treacherous Infamy straight up be bad. And then this story occurs in the outcome, the aftermath of the Wargasm one-shot of which I can't talk about. I don't know what the outcome is. Well, okay, I do know what the outcome is, but you're going to have to read about it. So given the, given the landscape, uh, Lady Death and her kind are viewed as enemies and there is a war, global war, uh, declared on them. And in fact, the company Halo, which strangely are the same lunatics who made this original DNA strain, are the actual organization that are hired as a security force to stop her. So that begins this particular topic. And in this storyline, we will be introducing a new villain for Lady Death, and on the surface, she really appears to be this benevolent, super heroic force named Lady Virtue. But of course, appearances can be deceiving. I don't know if I should say any more. So that is coming up in March, after Sworn Fest, 
Lady Death Chapter 15, Necrotic Genesis, a World War Death tie-in. Boy, I guess the one thing, other thing that I could tell you is that I have signed quite a cool artist for the Legend tier and the Ultimate art tier artists. They're real, real cool. I can't say anything about it. I mean, I got the contract, right? But what I'm looking for is the art. When I secure the art, it's easier to kind of talk about it. Until then, but man, for all us guys and gals who go back reading comics, you're gonna like this one. Next up in May, May of 2022, we have La Muerta Primeval. La Muerta Primeval. This is chapter eight, and in another panel, Writer Mike McLean and illustrator Joel Gomez are going to detail this story, so I don't want to step on them too much. But what I will say about this story is, well, a couple things. We actually did not have a La Muerta story planned. And when we were doing the onslaught a Kickstarter, in that first 24-hour period, we knew La Muerta must continue because people were just so stoked. And by the end of the weekend, following the launch of the Kickstarter, we had the root of the idea of Prime Evil. So the root of the idea is to take uh, La Muerta, AKA Maria Diaz, out of an area that she's familiar with. So we are all familiar with her as an urban character, as a character who fights on the city streets. Well, in this story, we actually take her into the deep, dark, and dank jungles of the Amazon. And I will say no more about that. I'm just going to give uh, Mike and Joel the space to discuss this particular story. But what I will say about this story is it is a horror story. So Maria Diaz, an urban anti-hero, is now plucked and dropped into a story that is a horror story. It's terror time for La Muerta. So more on that to come. Next up in August of 2022, we have Lady Death, Diabolical Harvest, Chapter 16, Diabolical Harvest. What is that name about? Again, I relate it to Necrotic Genesis because it's a continuation of the World War Death storyline where Lady Death becomes global public enemy number one along with all her brethren. They're all seen as things that must be destroyed. How will she rise up? I mean, if, if the whole world goes up against Lady Death, how the heck is she expected to survive? So, Diabolical Harvest, again, kind of reminding me of uh, DNA harvesting, DNA farming of a diabolical nature. So it's a further explanation of that. And we'll continue what we begin in Necrotic Genesis. I'm not going to say too much more about it because, of course, that's the second half. Um, let me go back to Necrotic Genesis and say that on page 48 of Necrotic Genesis, which is illustrated, being illustrated as we speak by the one and only Diego Bernard, that something happens that we have never done before with Lady Death something that I think many of you are going to find surprising. So I will say no more, but from a story point of view, something will happen on page 48. It's something we've never done before. So hold your horses, hold your horses. Next up, coming October 2022, Hell Witch Forbidden. This is Hell Witch Chapter 5 forbidden. So, in the aftermath of the events of Wargasm, Hell Witch finds herself in the north, way up in the areas of Iceland, in a very cold terrain, in a deep, dark, and dank forest. And it is in that environment with Hell Witch, along with some Hellborn allies, find herself up against 
the evil spirit of the forest. So if you're getting some folk horror vibes, it's true. This is another terror time story where we take our character like Hell Witch and we plunk her right in the middle of a horror story. And in this case, this is folk horror, deep and dark, has an ecological element, sort of like La Muerta. So I think if I were to look at those two characters, La Muerta and Hell Witch, they're both in storylines that I would call terror time, where our characters are usually the driving force or now find themselves victimized by unrelenting horror. So, Forbidden is a story of uh, folk horror. <laughs> so, with a truly, truly gruesome and wonderful monster that Hell Witch finds herself up against. So, that rounds out the beginning of our 2022 publishing schedule because if you take a look, we actually have a couple of other announcements. So, not yet scheduled, but entering into production are the following. First up, Lady Satanus Sinister Urge number one. A 48 page story. We have no idea who's illustrating it. But what I can tell you is this story is a story of the dark beginnings of Lady Satanus. And the story is set in New York City during 1977. Lady Satanus is expelled from hell after spending over a decade there within the castle of Satanus. This infinitely large citywide castle, she comes to earth robbed of her powers, robbed of her innate abilities, and finds herself in the New York City streets. These are the same sort of mean streets that were portrayed in, by Martin Scorsese in the movie Mean Streets or Taxi Driver. This is the summer of 77 where CBGBs and punk rock is exploding, Uptown Studio 54 and all the beautiful people are doing their thing. Plato's Retreat is a real live, open to the public swingers club. It's just madness. The city is, is near on fire. The, the difference between the haves and have nots are incredible. If you went downtown, the place is poverty stricken, horrible, uptown, wealth and riches. And it is that backdrop that we find Lady Satanus in. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that New York City is a character in this story. Now, Lady Satanus is the daughter of Satanus, and she notices uptown this magnificent building, and she recognizes from its description that it is owned by her father. And she chooses and decides that that building and everything in it will be hers. But to even embark upon this mission is madness. So this story is a starting at nothing and trying to challenge the greatest powers Lady Satanus finds herself up against inordinate odds. Street level demon gangs like the St. Mark's Maulers and totally organized crime families of demons including the brother and sister uh, head of a crime cartel who are named the Blackwells. So, that story is written by myself and Mike McLean. I took a lead on that particular story. And we don't have an artist. We actually, I just completed it. So we're gonna seek out a coffin quality style artist who really is comfortable with drawing all the detail of uh, New York City. Now, that's not all folks. We are going to do another story for 2022. And that is, Chaotica Unleashed. Chaotica Unleashed is a 48 page story co-written by myself and Mike McLean. For astute viewers, you will notice that Chaotica actually disappeared between chapter 10 and 11. And this story is gonna explain where she went. And where she went was a place called Witch World. This is a world 
on another dimension. And by the way, this is Chaotica. So here is Chaotica. She is Lady Death's daughter. And she does have some innate powers that are magical in nature. She even has an incredible acrobatic ability and sorcery ability. But in our story, she's feeling unfocused and has not done much to really refine her skills. And she's finding it insufficient for all the horrors that she finds herself in. And she answers a call to go to another universe like our own, but with this difference. When the Salem witch trials occurred, the witches weren't having it. And they actually used that moment as a fulcrum and took over. Now in the present, hundreds of years later, the entire world is ruled by families of witches. And Chaotica finds herself struggling between two families and two philosophical warring clans of witches. In this story, Chaotica will discover her true innate ability and her connection to the moon. And she will find in that connection a vast array of innate ability. So that is Chaotica uh, unleashed by Mike McLean and Brian Polito and further creative team to be announced, but likely to include uh, Brian Miller's Hi-Fi and veteran letterer Marshall Dillon. So folks, that is our primary publishing program. Let me go over the creative teams for each one. So I'm gonna come around here and Lady Death, Necrotic Genesis is co-written by Brian Polito and Mike McLean, illustrated by Diego Bernard, and colored by To Be Decided, and lettered by veteran letterer Marshall Dillon. La Muerta number one, Prime Evil, is written by Mike McLean. I had a hand on the story on that one. Illustrated by Joel Gomez. Uh, lettered by veteran letter Marshall Dillon and colorist likely to be CC De La Cruz. Then, Lady Death Diabolical Harvest number one, the returning team of Brian and Mike, Diego Bernard, and colorist to be decided, and veteran letter Marshall Dillon. Rounding out Hell Witch Forbidden, co written by Brian and Mike, illustrated by Diego likely colored by Hi-Fi, and lettered by veteran letter Marshall Dillon. Lady Satanist Sinister Urge, written by Brian and Mike, colored by Hi-Fi, and lettered by Marshall Dillon, illustrator to be announced. Chaotica Unleashed, written by Brian and Mike, illustrator to be announced, colored by Brian Miller and Hi-Fi, and lettered by veteran letterer Marshall Dillon. That's over 300 pages of new content. Whoa! Good news is we're working on it now. I hope you find all these very, very enticing. And remember, the Lady Death storylines are encompassed with the World War Death tie-in. And I would say that the La Muerta and the Hell Witch storylines are tied in with the Terror Time concept. And then I would say that Lady Satanus and Chaotica are tied together with the concept Dark Beginnings. So, folks, that is your Coffin Comics 2022 publishing schedule. A heck of a lot more detail to come. Of course, we will supplement our fun story schedule with crazy madness from Coffin Comics Shop and even cooler crazy stuff as the Deathocalypse storyline runs throughout the comics market throughout 2022. So thank you so much for listening, everybody. You've been great. I've been Brian Polito. Holler at you later.